Hello everyone, Joe from Central Control here, and we're back again today with another Central Control tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at Central Control Connect. Connect is included in the Studio Max and Neo versions of Central Control, but more importantly, what is Connect? Connect is a module that allows you to turn both NDI and internal sources, so think teleprompter, production clocks, that sort of thing, into extremely low latency WebRTC streams that can be viewed on a whole bunch of different devices. So laptops, VR headsets, smart TVs, all of that sort of thing. No need to install an app, works over Wi-Fi. I am actually using it right now, believe it or not, to view the central control teleprompter on my iPad. So there's kind of a few ideas of what you might want to use this for. Now let's get started by looking at how we set this up. So I've got here a completely blank, fresh central control project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the connect module. So I've clicked the add device button, and now I'm just gonna search for connect. You will see there's two different versions of this module, like I kind of alluded to just then. We're gonna use the NDI one today, and we'll probably look at the internal version in a later video probably the elusive part six of the teleprompter series. But for now, let's just add the connect NDI module. Now I'm actually gonna take some care and attention as I set the name of this, because the name will become relevant later on. And I'm gonna call this one PTZ. A little bit of a clue for you there, and just click okay. And now I've added it to my project. So we've got a whole bunch of different parameters here, and I'm gonna go through one by one what each of these do. So the first one, hopefully quite self-explanatory, it's the NDI source. What source are we going to be using to stream? So I am going to select my PTZ Optics camera because that's what I want to stream out. The next one is low bandwidth. Uh, this is used to select the low bandwidth 640 by 360 version of the NDI stream. Can be useful if you've got maybe low bandwidth or low processing resources, or if you do just need a low resolution uh, monitor stream. Next up is the resolution. So kind of going back to the previous one, uh, you're gonna to want to match this up as closely as you can to the source uh, resolution, just for performance reasons. It will quite happily convert on the fly from whatever resolution to whatever resolution you want to stream at. But I happen to know that my uh, camera is set at 4K 3840 by 2160, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Next up, the frame rate, the same kind of thing applies on this one. You wanna keep it as close as you can to the source for not only the best performance, but also for the best experience in the smoothest video stream. Uh, next up, we've got quality. So this will affect the amount of bandwidth your stream uses. And what's important to know about Connect is that it's not just one-to-one. -one. You can send this link out to as many devices on your local network or even WAN as, as you choose. So that might be a bit of a calculation when you're deciding what quality preset to use. But I'm on my local network. I've got a really good Wi-Fi signal for my devices to connect to. So I'm gonna leave it at ultra. Finally, encoding device, very important. So you've got multiple options here, depending on what hardware you're running. I've got an NVIDIA graphics card in my laptop, which we will be taking advantage of. It's worth noting that when you are using the CPU encoder, the resolution and frame rate kind of tops out at 1280 by, 7, by 1280 by 720 at about 60 frames a second. That's the upper limit for the CPU encoder. However, if you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can easily push the max, which is 4K 60, no problems at all. And you know, with the latest NVIDIA graphics driver updates, you can do about five, up to about, I think about eight of these on one system with minimal resource usage. But yes, we will be using the built-in NVIDIA graphics card. Once that's done, I'm, I've set it up. I'm gonna click this toggle here to enable it. And now we're ready to look at our stream on some devices. Now we've got our stream set up and we've enabled it. Let's take a look at how we can actually view it. Coming back over to the laptop, you will see the connect module helpfully has this button called connect. I'm gonna click on that, which will bring up this window. 
Got a couple of parameters I can change here for generating my link. The first one is the IP address. By default, this is going to be your LAN address of your primary network interface. You can also change this to any other network interfaces you might have set up, as well as your WAN address if you've configured a port forwarding to use Connect. If you do wish to set up port forwarding, you can come over to the settings tab and change the port accordingly to what you'd like to use. This is also where I can add in custom resolutions if I want to use one that I don't already have available to me. Going back to this though, the next parameter is the stream parameter. So two options here, I can either leave this on none, which will take my viewer to the default player where they can then select the stream that they want to view, or if I want to be helpful and they only want to view one stream, I can generate them a link just to that specific stream. In our case today, it's going to be the PTZ stream that we just set up. And there we go, we've now created that link. So to try it, I'm just going to click copy link. And then I'm going to open up Chrome on this laptop. And all I'm going to do is paste it straight into the browser. And now we can take a look at the stream. So there it is. You'll see it's really low latency. I think I can even show it you side by side. So I've got on the right here, I've got the raw stream coming out of the PTZ camera. And on the left, I've got the stream as it is in Connect. There will be a couple of extra frames just from the screen capture of the laptop, which are added on top. But I'd say the latency for this is probably in the realms of maybe five to six frames. So less than 100 milliseconds easily if you're running at 60 frames a second. So you will also have noticed that on that window, there is a QR code. And this is really useful if you want to pull the stream up on a device like an iPad, an iPhone, any other kind of tablet. So to use that, I'm going to get this iPad unlocked and I'm simply going to scan the QR code from Connect into the camera app. So to watch the stream on this iPad, I'm going to simply open up the camera app and scan the QR code. There it is. And it's going to navigate over to the Connect player. So you'll see in the player, I've got a source control for viewing all my different Connect streams I've got set up. As we said, we've only set up one. A volume control so I can mute, unmute the audio. And then, of course, the video stream itself. If I put this full screen, you can kind of get an idea for how low the latency is. And this is just running over a regular domestic Wi-Fi network, nothing special at all, and streaming with extremely low latency and high quality. Connect is available in the Studio Max and Neo versions of Central Control, giving you the flexibility to choose between subscription and perpetual licensing. I should also add, you can have as many Connect modules as you like in a single project, giving you the flexibility to generate all those streams for your iPads, VR headsets, smart TVs, the list goes on. We'll be back again next week for another tutorial. Until then, see you later.